What you're about to see was entirely generated by this workflow here. This entire video is fully automated from the editing to the transitions to the on-screen text that displays the name of the species and even the dynamic countdown that shows how many years ago each species existed which by the way automatically speeds up or slows down depending on the gap between species. This is the kind of content that can get millions of views but as you can imagine usually requires a lot of manual effort to make so I wondered if it was even possible to automate the entire process and after 40 hours of hard work i was able to build this workflow here that generated the video you just saw and in this video i'm going to show you exactly how you can set this workflow up yourself step by step and we'll also discuss how much it costs to generate videos like this but before we do that let's run it once so that you can see it in action after that i'll quickly go through the notes so you can understand what's happening in each one i'll also be sharing this workflow completely free you can find it directly in my free school community where you'll get access to this and many other resources I've already shared in my previous videos. The link to the community will be down in the description below. And if this video helps you, leaving a like genuinely helps a lot. But let's not waste any more time and run the workflow. All right, so as you can see here, the workflow is connected to a manual trigger where I manually added some JSON into the output section. This JSON contains both the video titles and the species I want to include in my video. For this example, I've set it to the evolution of gorillas with 12 related species in the lineage this is currently the only part that's not automated and that's intentional because i want maximum control over how many species are included and which ones they are with that said i'm going to run the workflow now and wait for the output It looks like i forgot to turn on the wait node which caused it to spam the api requests to fix that, I'm going to stop the execution, pin whatever was already generated so it doesn't regenerate and run it again so it continues from where it left off. All right, the execution is complete. Let's take a look at what it generated. And there you go, as you can see, the video looks like it was done by a professional, especially with the way the text appears on screen. But with that out of the way, now I'm going to quickly walk you through the workflow so you understand what's going on under the hood and which models we are using. I'll keep this brief so I don't take your time. You can always download the workflow and explore it in detail later. So first we have the trigger node, which is where you set the video title and the species list. Next, we have a code node that generates a random string. String. This string is used as the name of the folder that the next command node here creates and 
the folder is the one you see here. After that, we have a split out node here, which turns the species list from a single array into independent items. Each of those species is then passed into this LLM node, which generates an object containing the species name, an image from describing how it looks like in its natural habitat, how many million years ago it existed, and the period it lived in. Then we have a code node that simply assigns the evolution number to each video from first to last. After that, we send HTTP request to key.ai to generate the images using the prompts created by the LLM earlier. If you're not familiar with key.ai, it's a platform that hosts tools like Nano Banana, VO3, Kling, and many more and lets us access them through a single centralized API. In this case, we are using Nano Banana for the image generation, not the pro version, by the way. Once complete, each request returns a task ID. We then wait 70 seconds and pull the status using that task ID. If the status is successful, it continues. Otherwise, it loops and waits another 70 seconds. Next, we use a set node to extract the download URL, pass it to the next node to download the image, and then store that url back on the item so it can be used later after that we have another code node at this point all the species data has been generated each item represents one species in the evolutionary chain this code builds the actual video order it decides which species transitions into which as you can see in the output here next we use another llm to generate the transition video prompts by looking at what we are transitioning from and what we are transitioning into we then send video generation requests to key.ai again this time using clean 2.5 turbo we send a transition prompt the species image and the target species image that we wanted to transition into. After that, we wait about 10 minutes, check the status from the task ID that it returns like it did earlier, download the videos and move into the final phase. In this phase, we first add all the generated videos into the folder we created at the beginning and the videos are named by their order number as you can see here. Then in this node, we trim every video to exactly five seconds using FFmpeg. This removes any extra milliseconds added by the AI and ensures the on-screen text stays perfectly in sync. These trimmed videos are saved with a trimmed underscore video prefix as you can also see. Next, we generate a text file containing the names of all the trimmed videos. That file is passed into an execute command node which uses again FFmpeg to merge them all together into a single video called final output. After that, we merge the video with an audio file called audio mp3 which lives in the base directory you can replace this with any audio you like once it's done it creates another video called final output with audio and now we are in the final phase this is where we generate the on-screen text by writing all the content to a text file saving it to the folder and running one last ffmpeg command to burn the text into the video that gives us the final output which is the video we watched earlier all right so now that you understand how how it works let me show you how to set it up so as you probably noticed i'm running a locally hosted n8 and instance and that's because we need ffmpeg to automate the video editing and this only works when you have n8 and locally hosted and to do this the first thing you will need if you haven't already is to download and install docker desktop i'll leave a link to it in the description below once that's installed you can head to my free school community and find the post associated with this video under the youtube resource category download the file called n8n ffmpeg kit and while you are there also download the workflow template right next to it and once you are done downloading you can unzip the n8n ffmpeg kit folder and open a terminal inside it this is how you do it on windows on mac you can quickly look it up if it's different but the command we are going to run should be the same then just run docker compose up dash d and then click on enter this will deploy a local n8 and instance with ffmpeg included and once it's complete open docker desktop go to the containers tab and you should see the n8 and container live then click the exposed port as follows or just go to localhost colon 5678 in your browser which should have the same effect once we are in it will prompt us to set up an account so let's do that once you do you can create an empty the workflow and import the template you downloaded earlier as follows. 
at this point the only thing that is left is to set up our api key so let's do that first let's set up openai's api key to get access to chat gpt and for that i'm gonna head over to platform.openai.com slash api keys from here we can create a new key and click on copy once copied we can configure the node just like this by pasting it here finally we are going to do the same for key.ai and for this let's head over to key.ai slash api dash key and here we can create another key for this once we do that we can head back to our http request node here and in this case we have to make sure that we first type bearer and then a space before we actually paste in our api key but once we do that we are pretty much set and you are ready to generate video just like the one you saw earlier all right so there you have it i hope that this video was helpful for you and as promised regarding the price it costs to generate videos like this for the image generation i use nano banana and not nano banana pro so per image it costs around i think 2.5 to 3 cents and since we are creating 12 images that's going to be 12 multiplied by 3 cents 36 cents there and as for the video generation it uses clean 2.5 turbo which costs around 21 cents per video so multiply that by 12 as well you will get around two dollars 53 cents so two dollars 53 cents plus 36 cents which adds to around 290 and we can just call that three dollars flat but yeah that's about it with the video i'll see you in the next one take care